Dr. Strongen presents Fractional Distillation. Today we are going to separate a mixture of volatile organic liquids. Safety considerations for this experiment include being aware of never heating a solution to dryness, never heating a closed system in which pressure builds up, and to not overfill glassware with liquid to be distilled. Wear your goggles at all times and always handle glassware and chemicals while wearing gloves. Have your instructor check your distillation setup prior to use. The purpose of a fractional distillation is to separate a mixture of liquids based on their characteristic boiling ranges. It differs from a simple distillation in that a vertical fractionating column is used. This column promotes multiple successive vaporization condensation cycles to enrich each component to better achieve purification. The components of the still include a still pot, the vessel holding the liquids to be separated. It's attached to the fractionating column, which is connected to a still head holding the thermometer. A water-cooled condenser is connected with a takeoff adapter and a receiver to collect the distilled liquid. The heat source is a heating mantle. The amount of heating is controlled by a variable transformer attached to the heating mantle. The positioning of the thermometer will be critical to your success. It should be just below the sidearm so it will be immersed in the vapor in order that you can obtain accurate readings. The first priority is to uniformly pack your fractionating column. Select a piece of copper sponge weighing about 8 grams. Roll it into a sausage shape with your hands. Then work out any knotted areas with your fingertips to ensure that the packing has a uniform density throughout. Insert the packing into your condenser using a metal rod. Manipulate the packing with the rod so that it is uniformly dense the length of the column. Check this by holding the packed column up to the light. Now we're ready to assemble the still. First, prepare a 50-50 ethyl acetate toluene solution in a 25 milliliter round bottom flask. Add two to three boiling chips gently. Note that your distilling pot should be no more than about two-thirds full at the beginning to allow room for frothing and boiling. Mount the round bottom flask on the ring stand about six inches above the desktop. Be sure that the ground glass joint of the flask is securely held by the clamp. This is the most important clamp in the apparatus because it's the one that holds up the still. Attach the packed fractionating column to the flask, making sure that the joints connect well. Adjust the flask clamp in its holder so that the column is as vertical as you can make it. If it isn't vertical, the condensate will drain to one side of the column and will not contact the rising vapor as effectively. The separation won't be as good. Clamp the fractionating column very loosely with a large three-finger clamp. This is important. This is not a support clamp. It only prevents the still from tilting to one side. If you clamp it tightly, you may disturb the alignment of the ground glass joints and cause a vapor leak or strain on the glass and breakage. Pre-assemble the top of the still, except for the thermometer, by attaching the still head and the curved adapter to the condenser using rubber bands. Mount the pre-assembled pieces on the distilling column, then position the still on the desktop so that it is near enough to a cup sink for the condenser hoses to reach. 
Then, use a ring stand and clamp the condenser loosely with a large three-finger clamp in such a way that the clamp gently supports the condenser from underneath and prevents the still from tilting. Again, if you clamp this condenser tightly, it may force a misalignment of the standard taper joints and cause a vapor leak or broken glassware. Next, mount the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder receiver using a small three finger clamp. Insert the thermometer carefully into the adapter. Grasp, twist, and gently push. If it does not go into the adapter easily, moisten the glass. Mount the thermometer on the still head. Adjust the height of the thermometer so that the top of the mercury bulb is a little below the sidearm. Again, this is important. If the thermometer is too high, it will give an incorrect reading because it won't be fully immersed in the hot vapor stream. Attach the condenser hoses, water in at the lower connector, out at the top. Wet the hose end for easier attachment. Adjust the water flow by picking up the outlet hose and turning on the water until you see a gentle, steady stream from the hose. Mount a small heating mantle under the distilling pot, supporting the mantle with an iron ring. The heating surface should touch the flask. Plug the heating mantle into a variable transformer. Use cotton pads to insulate the exposed glass between the top of the column packing up to and including the area around the sidearm. Also, Insulate the upper exposed part of the still pot and where it connects to the fractionating column. Keep the cotton pads out of the space between the pot and the heating surface. Much of the heating occurs by radiation rather than convection or thermal contact. Also, plug the top connector on the jacket of the fractionating column using a rubber bulb or a piece of cotton. This prevents air circulation and unwanted cooling inside the jacket. You are now ready to start the distillation. Have your apparatus checked by the instructor. See your lab manual for instructions and proper settings used in carrying out the distillation, for the proper recording and analyzing data and samples, and for instructions on disassembling the still and waste management.